back at my in-laws this weekend. So finally, you can do some more work for the 2655. Plan is here, just kind of make it mobile for transport more than anything. We're gonna come in here and try to knock the duels off. I just got done spraying them down. All those turnbuckles with WD-40. I just stick a bar in there and see if we can get them to turn. The back ones are turnbuckles, but the front ones are just long, long bolts. So all else fails, we get a torch out, we cut them. We're gonna work on that. That way it's under width. That way I can get it hauled home sometime. Don't know when that's gonna be. But we'll work on that deal, and then I'm gonna also try to crawl in here and uh, get my brakes loosened up. Since you know the first video, they were hanging up and dragging, so we're gonna take that cover off there, right here, and uh, hopefully get everything loosened up in there. It is, the fronts are kind of the, the same deal; they're up, up in there. So it's gonna be a little tight, but we we can make it happen. Then I'd also like to pull spark plugs, take this hood off and pull spark plugs, then put uh, ATF down on the cylinders just to kind of get them lubed up, let it soak, and then we'll kind of go from there. We'll, we might play with some other stuff if I have time and can figure out where to get a hold of things. It'll be fun to bar this thing over to and see if it'll spin. I don't know if I can come up. Yeah, I can get a bar on it right there so we might try to do that i got my big four foot breaker bar so we'll just keep messing with it pretty pretty clean old thing though as far as all that stuff goes so we'll we'll see what happens i guess well this one's not coming apart too bad i got two left at a six yeah they they didn't come apart too horrible these two have been a fight. The back ones I were a different style. They were just threaded on there with nuts and I actually got all the back ones loose already. So we're just down to these two on this side and then the other front tire. Okay, duels are all off. Pretty uncomplicated, really. 2655 is looking, looking quite a bit narrower now. More, more haulable. I'm glad the inside tires hold air too, because that saves me some serious headache. So, I'm set you guys up here on a tripod. We're gonna get the hood here hooked up. Should just. I don't know. We're going to figure out. But I want to flip the hood up and get access to the spark plugs in here and we'll get ATF put down the cylinders and get that soaking. And then I think we might mess with getting the brakes loosened up from there because it's got to get pushed on a trailer sometime because I don't think I'll get it started here. So we'll get the brakes loosened up and then, yeah, then maybe come back and try to bar this over after it's soaked for a while. Driving by. Step up on here and see what else we got. Undo. Looks like a 
got Add all the spark plugs pretty easily now. Big ol' six cylinder. So it's like I need a 7 8 or 13 16 socket, and we'll start breaking those guys loose and see what they look like. T-I-T-T -T spark plug. Kind of funny looking. Never heard of that one before. Doesn't look too rusty though, so that's excellent. That was my biggest concern here was rust down in the cylinders. So that's number five. We'll set it there. Back. Number one, I'm gonna grab an extension. Most of these, I think, will just spin right out, but we're gonna spray, give them some extra encouragement. We got a board, so we'll shove her down in there and see if we learn anything. Okay, back. 
back out there and put some more stuff down in it. Not the most encouraging thing. It's interesting to work on a motor that's above my head too. I six foot four generally don't have that problem. Working on stuff above my head, to be honest. Most of it's down in my belly. Here, Minneapolis Moline Long Life Engines. So, I mean, maybe. Okay. Not rusty again. We have a little bit of service us on that one, but nothing, nothing wild. Four out of six so far, we're looking healthy-ish. That's what it looks like. The yeah, hydraulic cooler line is not so nicely placed for me. Once we get these out, we'll kind of evaluate all six plugs and then dump, dump some ATF down in the cylinders. I got a few ports left over from an end. Uh, ATF change on a Ford. Dually pickup I just sold. We'll dump that in each cylinder. It might take a lot because it's an 800 cubic inch motor. That's that's a few ounces of fluid, really. Okay, that one not rusty at all, too. Okay, one to go. Last one, not rusty. So, we're doing okay. But as you can see, none of those look too bad at all, really. I have seen a lot, lot worse. Number two there is about the most rustiest one at all of them. It's just really the threads. Everything else there looks pretty darn good. So, uh, yeah, I got some core to ATF left over from a Ford pickup, and we're gonna dump them down the cylinders here and let them, let them soak. So I've been thinking about it for a while. What I think I'm gonna do here is put my big air jack up underneath somewhere in the back end here, and come in and loosen up this tensioner. Maybe smack on the end of it a couple times too. And uh, we'll try to spin the wheel here and see if we can get each wheel spun free. We'll just back those tensioners way off. That way there's no tension on the brakes at all. We can tighten that back up, st stuff back up later. I, I get the feeling it's going to be a while before this thing runs. So brakes are kind of least of my worry right now. But on the front end here, looking at this brake, or where the brake should be, there's no linkage or anything running into it. So I assume there's probably a tractor rear end dropped in here. So we're, I don't think there's brakes on the front axle. I think there's only brakes on the rear. So I don't think we have to mess with the fronts at all. There's nothing over on that side either that I can see unless you know, I need to back that nut off there, but there's literally no linkage, no brake lines, nothing going to that. So I think we're just gonna ignore it. Okay, I got the lock nut and jam nut backed clear off. So there should be no tension inside in there. And I tapped on that a little bit to see if I get it loosened up some and hopefully this a little looser. I figure out how I can get my air jack in here. We'll air up this side and see if we can rotate this wheel without having it dragging. I can't, I think it was the one on the other side I was having issues with, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, air jack's in there. That seems like a fairly safe place to jack. 
Verizon. Our wheel's turning already, so... Okay, let's see here. We're in gear somewhere. Well, thinking about it, turning that would put power to the front. And unless there's a differential in that transfer case, it would also put power to the front wheel. So I think, I mean, this wheel definitely isn't, it's not stuck anymore. Like, that's not brakes. So I think we're good there. And the way it's acting, it acts like the front axle's loose. Well, get the other one loosened up on the other side. Then maybe I'll pull around front and hook my pickup onto it and see if it seals for roll. I think it was this other wheel. I don't have to go back and watch the video. Somebody go back and comment which one it was. I think it was this wheel that was stuck and not wanting to spin. So we'll back that one off too and tap on it and then rock on it. And if it does the same thing, I think we're, I think we're okay. You can always throw a jack underneath the front end too and see if it does the same thing. Well, the jack this time up. The tensioner is not playing nice on this one quite so much. But that is, we're not getting any movement out of that yoke on the bottom there. So, uh, yeah, that's your locked up brake. So, I'm going to have to pull that cover off, I think. So, we'll get wrenches in there and see about pulling that cover off there. Okay, this really isn't that much fun because there's not that much room to work back in here. But I got that cover off the brake and uh everything that in there is loose now because this cover is what the brake pads wear on or brake i don't know the brake drum shoe i don't know the brakes wear on that cover so now we turn that turns and those are moving back and forth so i think we got the brakes freed up so I'm gonna probably bring my pickup around front here and just give it a, a little tug and see if it rolls nice now. Because if it rolls nice now, I know I can get it on a trailer and get it home. I have to pay someone to haul it home. But yeah, we're, we're getting closer here. Okay, chains are hooked up. That looks to me like a rolling tractor. Doesn't, no signs of drag marks this go around at least. So that makes me feel a hell of a lot better. It means I can at least get it on a trailer and get it the hell out of here. So we're gonna pull it back to where it was sitting now. And then we're gonna try to borrow the motor over because yeah, brakes, motor I can work on at home. Brakes has got to get on a trailer. So we're, we're, we got that going for us now. Okay, tractor rolls around, brakes are loose. Next big thing is uh, see if that crank will turn. That's, that's the next important thing. Is the motor gonna turn over? I got into an eight socket and a big old four foot long breaker bar. So here goes everything. That's not encouraging. So far we're just tightening it up. That's not good. Huh. 
Well, guys, I don't know. I think it's sort of stuck currently. Um, there's not really great access to the flywheel anywhere to get a bar on the ring gear. Besides maybe pulling the starter off. That, that's about the only way I see of getting that the ring gear to bar this thing over. Because I don't want to break the bolt off the dampener on the front. That would be a catastrophe. Big catastrophe. There's nothing really here. Well, I guess there's a hole right there we could stick a, something in and see what we got. Well, maybe grab a screwdriver and see what's behind door number two. But that that's pretty messy. Whoops. Well, we got that cover off and there's nothing useful behind that to use. I would assume that's for timing marks. More than anything, I was hoping we'd get access to some geese teeth on the flywheel. It looks like we're gonna end up pulling the starter off this guy and see if we can bar it over that way, I guess. Well, there you have it. There's a flywheel in there. I know that's not really a shock, but we'll set a camera up and I'll get a bar and we'll see what happens. It might, it might turn. I don't know. Let's see if I can get a hold of anything here. make it turn. This is barely a weight one, so yeah. Hmm. Is there a bigger bar with me? I might. Or, or levers. Maybe I can get it in there somehow. See it rock just barely. Do the starter hole. Well, I think I'm gonna call it for today. I gotta go see a buddy about some cold beer. Before I quit though, we're gonna pop the park, spark plugs back in, clean up a bunch of tools and stuff. I'm gonna load the duels tomorrow, take those home with me and the 706 that's sitting right over there. Father-in-law bought that 706 off me about two years ago, used a little, said he'd rather prefer a diesel. So I brought down an 856 Custom. So ooh, we'll get loading that tomorrow. Might show you the 856 Custom too, because it's a pretty slick tractor, got a cool backstory. Yeah, we'll get spark plugs in, pick up tools, and then head to Garden City and we'll get some beer to Bowling Alley. Tools are loaded. Here's my little, my father-in-law's little uh, Kubota payloader get him up there. Kind of a game of ring toss, getting those three stacked together. But should have room to just drive a 706 and just drive the front axle right up and over that guy. Chain that one down, chain the 706 down. But what I brought down here, is a 69 856 custom 856 customs were only made in 1969 as a competitor to john deere 4000 or the oliver 1750 special um this one's really cool because it actually went on the tractor k to dc um it's got some really um cool old bumper stickers on it got a cool rig the 856 Customs were uh, low option tractors. So they didn't have 
They had eight volt front hubs. They had a smaller fuel tank off a of 706 diesel. Generally had 34 inch rubber, normally one remote. I put a second remote on this tractor for my father-in-law and I had a nice set of 38 inch rubber that we put on the back of it. I don't think there's any other options. Oh, and there's single lights in the fenders on an 856 Custom, which this one, it's got two. So, but yeah, it's a really cool rig. It runs really nice. And I really didn't want to lose track of the tractor knowing it had some history. So yeah, sold as my father-in-law and uh, actually traded to my father-in-law. And I'm going to take a 706 home that I sold him a couple years ago-ish. But yeah, pretty nice 856 Custom. It came out of the Clay Center, Kansas area on an auction. Runs good, should be perfect for him to pull a mower and do other random odd jobs with. And these things just start and run great. The tractor I'm taking home is just a pretty common 706 Farmall gas. I think it's a 63 or 64 model. Short hydraulic lever, cast iron, um, PTO lever. So it's an early 706, or early 06 series. 16934 rubber, which is very unfortunate because those are hard to get. But uh, it was sold new out of Agra, Kansas. Um, sold on a state sale over there, retired farmer. Um, my dad went over there to buy the tractor, didn't get it bought, got home. The guy that owned the gas station in Almina, and if you're from Almina, you knew Bud. Um, he bought the tractor and sent dad back to get it. He had left an absentee bid with the auctioneer. And uh, yeah, so auctioneer ran him up pretty high in the damn tractor too. You know, little crooked auctioneer life. But uh, dad had to go back and get the tractor, brought it home. Bud put a loader on it, used it for years and years around the service station for maintaining gravel and stuff like that and doing other odd jobs. And then uh, Bud passed away, sold the gas station to the guy that owns it now. And um, I, dad and I bought it off of him two years ago now, I think. And then my father-in-law wanted a tractor to pull a mower with. And this one's pretty solid old tractor, so I took it down here to him and then he decided he wanted an 856 or something diesel more so we're gonna load this guy up and put it on the deck and get hooked on and chain down and head home but i really wish i could read that because i would tell you what the name of the dealership was but it's just too far gone unfortunately but pretty nice slick dry climate western tractor so nothing too crazy features wise or anything like that i took a i don't know what brand of loader i took off of it but yeah, nothing too wild here. Good tractor, good sol solid straight. But we'll load her up. There we go. Loaded up to go home. The 706 wanted to put up a fight. It started leaking fuel and ran all the fuel out on the ground I had in it and didn't have any more. So we ended up pushing it on there. I'll we'll deal with it later. But uh, yeah, we're chained down, ready to rock and roll. Hopefully, next time I'm down here, I'm getting this thing loaded up to take back to Almina and we can see if we get the motor unstuck and uh, figure out getting propane to it and see if we can make it run. And with that guys, thanks once again for tuning in. We'll have more on this. I promise. I don't know when. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Go drag something out of the weeds and get it running.